Having a younger brother was annoying. Oh, that's the job of a younger brother. <laughs> we would hide our report cards. Yeah. <laughs> well, not hide. We would intercept them. Don't I look like mom with my new hair? I sent my voice mail. It was like, hey, if this is Emily, like, you know. <laughs> late, you like, made that your voice dad mail. called me and it went to voicemail. And he's like, hey, son, I think you should change your voicemail. And that was the most cringe clip you think <laughs> ever. Ramble. Basic. Thank you to Macy's, Rosetta Stone, and Rakuten for sponsoring this episode of Pretty Basic. Hey guys, so as you know, Mother's Day is this weekend and Alicia and I just wanted to come on here and give a quick shout out to all of the moms out there, all of the motherly figures that listen to our podcast. We just want to say thank you so much. We love you. Thank you for all that you do and happy Mother's Day. Um, Ready? Yeah. So we look at this camera first and then after I do the intro, we can look at each other and if you ever want to look at a camera, that's your camera. That's the one that's on you. Okay, so I look there if I like want to look at a camera. If you want like an office like that. deadpan moment, like, right to that Remy's camera. a terrible sister. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Just like that. Okay, ready? Yeah. Set? Go. Hey guys, welcome back to Pretty Basic. Today we have a very special, special, special co host. It is Remy Cruz speaking. And on the other couch, we have, please introduce yourself. I am Shane Cruz, Remy's brother. Yay! Beautiful intro. Thank, thank you, you for thank being you. here today. Of course. The nerves will subside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you on. want a shot? Time. I can get you a drink. Oh, I know so you're not good. much of a drinker. <laughs> no. Maybe a little weed. <laughs> we no, should. Then, then they'll be the quietest podcast <laughs> ever. It's gonna be just like <laughs> zoning out. <laughs> We should get some cans in here for guests. They can just like relax a bit. Oh, the, is that like the little edible the drinks? Things? I don't know. Okay. So good. I'm not a fan. They all taste, they're like weird flavors. Like lavender, know. vanilla, or like washed rosemary. And things <laughs> washed like that. rosemary. Yeah, I swear. It was, or like, it's like whispering. It's like a whispering LaCroix, time. LaCroix. Yes. With like a taste of weed. Just, yeah. Not my alley. Well, now we're never going to get sponsored. So thank you so much for that, Shane. Just kidding. They're the best. <laughs> Well, in case you guys didn't know, I do have a younger brother and he is here today. We are each other's only siblings and Shane is not really one for the spotlight. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't love a camera. He doesn't love a video. In mm. my 10 years of being on YouTube, he's been in two videos, one of which I believe is still live. The yes. second uh, we did film and he went into my channel on the back end and deleted it without telling me and made my mom very upset. So we have one video living on the internet mm -hmm. and now we'll have two. Yes. Are Is you this a video? Too? It's just not just podcast. It, no, the video goes on YouTube. Oh, Thank you so okay. much for keeping okay. up with my career. Gotcha. gotcha. No, I mean, I, I saw, but like, I feel like they're not all uploaded on there. Well, yeah, we did the, we've done this uh, podcast for five years in the first Three and a half, four. We only did audio, uh, okay. but you made it on just in time for the video. Perfect. What do you mean? <laughs> I told our mom that you're coming on. Oh, you and told she, her? Oh, she was crying. She's like, my dream. Oh goodness. <laughs> she's gonna like fall asleep to this night. <laughs> Every night she's gonna play it. Say hi to mom. You can wave to her in that camera. Hi mom. Hey dad. <laughs> hi dad. Hi mom. Love you. <laughs> hi auntie. Hi grandma. Um, Everybody. So thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure. Last week, Alicia had her sister Ashley on and they answered a, a slew of questions. But you know what? Actually, before we get into the questions, let's give them a little background on you. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, let's do it. Uh, give them a little spiel. Um, okay. I am uh, Shane Cruz. I have a sister named Remy Cruz. Yep. I have a dad named Ani Cruz. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. A lovely mother named Suzanne Cruz. Lovely. I am 26 years old. I have a lovely wife named Liliana. Yeah, Liliana. Uh, I have a dog named Sadie. Uh -huh. And then we have our first kid on the way. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. he's, he's gonna be a dad. I was gonna say you're expecting. Like you kind of are. She's expecting and you're there too. Oh, we're expecting, yeah. <laughs> We're expecting one. It better, he better be there. I mean, he's definitely there, but. He's there. Wait, can I tell them the little backstory of how you guys told me that you were having a baby? Oh, yeah, go for it. It was funny. <laughs> so. I think it was Lily's idea because I wanted to just tell you. I was like, let's just. Oh, no. I wanted to go to dinner with you guys. And I wanted like the real big shock factor. Oh, my to God. Go In like a like, public area. Just drop it on you. And be like, hey, so, you know, we're having a kid. <laughs> but. Lily was like, no, let's do it like in this way. So I love her. Lily and I, we just get along so well. I feel like we love. You guys grew up in the same town. You guys have the same friends. You guys. We really both have the dance. same friends. Yeah, it's exactly. so you guys crazy. both danced. You guys. Yeah. It's really wild. So Shane and Lily went to high school together. Mm -hmm. um, but you guys didn't really like actually start dating until late 
2021. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you guys have, it, it's, it was been like, a, it's a whirlwind romance. Um, I never knew Lily, but once you guys started dating and then I was like finally able to meet her, we realized we have like a mutual best friend, which the my vlog channel knows about, Kyla, my friend in yeah. Hawaii, who mm -hmm. was like so close to me in high school. We both are friends, or she's our mutual friend, which is so crazy. But Shane in 2021 started dating Lily. And then October of 2022, uh, my mom, your birthday's in October. And my mom was like, Hey, come back to the house. We're going to like go to dinner for Shane's birthday, but come a little early. Cause we're going to do, um, a little, uh, like hang out at the house first. Oh, yeah, okay. And I was That's like, was. Yeah, I okay, sure. I forgot how we got you to get over there instead of meeting us at the restaurant. She was like, we're, we're going to have like a hangout. And I was like, cool. I was expecting like appetizers. Nothing was laid out. I so was like, awkward. Mom is, she's, mom's so, not, she's so awkward when it comes to spice. She's like, because she overthinks it. Yeah, she That's does. She tries to be like really nonchalant and like not show any emotion, but she, she always can't. shows emotion. So it's weird when she's like quiet and not all like, oh my God, like, how are you? She's Love so you. bad with secrets. Like she keeps them, but it's very, you can tell something. She has a, hiding a seething on. smile behind her lips when she's just like, Exactly. Yeah. She can't hide it very well. So she told me to come over to the house. So Cal and I go over to the house and we're hanging out on the backyard and all the dogs are playing. And then all of a sudden it gets, it gets kind of quiet. And I look over and uh, Lily and Shane are sitting on the outdoor furniture and they're like, Remy, we got you a gift. Keep in mind, like we weren't, nothing was happening. So like uh -huh. Cal was on his phone and then we were just oh, like, yeah, 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 like no, we Everyone didn't know was anything was coming. And I walk over and Lily hands me a bottle of wine that says pairs well with being an auntie. And the there way I had a, not a horrible reaction because I was obviously like excited. I was more of just like it, you didn't believe it. No, I was like, am I being pranked? And I was like, well, I, I don't know. Like, should I, should I be like over the top right now, or what should I do? Like, no, what should my reaction everybody be? doesn't know how to react. I was, I was just not prepared whatsoever. And I look over and I'm like, I'm just like, oh my, oh my god, oh my god, oh my, is this real? Oh my god, oh my god. And Lily and you were like, yep, it's real. And mom's like standing 15 feet away, smiling, just like filming us like this. And dad's like nowhere to be found. <laughs> Everyone's crying. Yeah. And all the girls are crying. And yeah, Lily's crying. And I'm like, Cal, and I like nudge Cal. I'm like, Cal. And he he's looks. Like, what? I know. And I show him, I'm like, look at the bottle. And he looks and he's like, oh, oh Cal's my, the most oh like, my he's, god. he's a dad. On. He's just like, oh my gosh, nice. Congrats. Shane. Like, he's like, <laughs> He's ready to go. He, he, this is Cal. No shock. He's what? Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. What? No and way. so then we're like celebrating and I'm just like, my head is reeling the whole time. It did feel real at that time, to be honest, even for us still. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. Cause it was still pretty early on. You guys, she had just hit the first trimester right? or just finished it or was um, about to. Yeah. Uh, around August 20th is when it was uh, like, you know, when, it started. when the baby was conceived. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 but you know what I mean? That, I think that's around when we kind of, when she noticed or something, cause we were in Joshua Tree and we were like doing this last thing before I start class again and everything like that. And uh, we were, I wanted to drink wine cause I was like, oh, it's our last few all right? And she just wasn't feeling good, her stomach and everything. So she didn't drink like the first night we were there and whatever, we were just hanging out in the backyard watching the stars with Sadie and whatnot. And there's a hot tub and everything. And then the second night I was like, okay, well, we'll have our little hoorah, you know, tomorrow night. And I was really sad cause I was like, I don't want to, you know, party alone. So we just hung <laughs> out. I was like, you know what I mean? But it's, you know, it's nothing but. And then the next day it comes around. She's like, I still am not feeling good. Blah, blah. You know, you know, all this stuff. And I was like, no, if you don't want to drink with me, like, if you, you can just say it. Me, you just say it. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a pretty fun person. It's like, I, I'm just not going to hurt me. But uh, no, so then she was kind of skeptical. And I was like, no, no, you're wrong. And she kind of you know, brought up the possibility of that. And I was like, what? no, no. Yeah. And um, go back home, you know, all that stuff happens. And she, you know, freaks out more and, you know, takes some tests and. I forget. I remember actually the when she came out of the bathroom, she was like, "I don't know how to like say this. Like, I feel like I should surprise you about it, but like." But she like you guys dude, weren't preparing for yeah, that. I mean, dude. It's, it's different from when you're like <laughs> planning and like, trying. Re, yeah. yeah, really actively and progressively planning on something like a specific time and yeah. that versus kind of just like. Well, you have time to like plan a surprise. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. Well, for her, it was more just for both of us a shock factor. And I think she kind of just wanted the support immediately rather than kind of you know figure yeah. out. what yeah, because we're, we're both young, so I think there, there definitely was some thoughts on, like, what we should do, what yeah. we want to do, but I think ultimately we decided together that we wanted to do that eventually. I think, yeah, that that's kind of what helped us decide that we wanted, you know, to do it. I mean, you guys do whatever is best for you two as a couple, and that's all that matters. At the end of the yeah. day, that's all that matters, what exactly. you guys want to do. Mm -hmm. So you, that's how I found out, and I remember, then we had to go to your birthday dinner, <laughs> and I was just like, oh my, oh my God, what's happening, what's happening? And I remember as I got in my car, and Cal was like driving me, and you were walking out following me, you 
as you were getting into your car, you go, have fun talking about that. And you slam your car door <laughs> and we all just drive to dinner. And the whole time I was like, oh my God, this is like, this is just so unexpected. But I mean, fast forward, it's been what, like six months or so since then. And we are all so excited. You're going to be a dad. I know. I'm gonna it be is a crazy how fast the time flew. Yeah. It is insane. I was saying to you last night, I was like, some people's pregnancies feel long. Mm -hmm. They feel like they're, they've been pregnant for like three years. I'm sure for Lily, it, it's felt like a decade. Though, That's you true. Know, with dealing all the different, you know, body changes she has to go through. And it, it's maybe easier for her to fathom, you know, the, the you know, bringing in another human being into his life in, in a month. And just along that whole entire nine months of her thinking about it and, you know, seeing her body change. But from the guy's perspective or like the husband, you know, boyfriend, whatever perspective, it's different because you don't really get immediate physical changes. You know, you don't get these yeah. hormonal changes. So it's a lot harder for the guy, I feel like, to actually, you know, picture a baby coming into the world being half you, half her and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah, the, what dad was saying to me is that, like, the second you hold him or her, it's going to feel like it's all makes sense and everything is just Aww. peaceful. And he's going to say that you're going to feel like your mindset changes on everything. For sure. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, I mean, uh, Lily's already changing her mindset on things. Like right now she's currently nesting and Aww. getting all of the stuff ready. It's really cute. She's getting everything ready. We're doing research on every single thing. She's a superstar about that. Like I don't have to lift a finger on any of that. You're I'm lucky. just there for her. I'll do the house chores and everything. I'll yeah. do whatever it takes to make it easier for her. But she's really on top of it. It makes it a lot easier for me too. That's so sweet. I think that's so, so incredible seeing all the different perspectives like obviously Lily is carrying in when she gives birth and you get to hold your child for the first time but whether people are going through like surrogacy or whatever mm -hmm. it may be you know who whoever whatever um I think it's just such a special moment and I cannot wait and I I not to make it about me but I can't <laughs> wait to be what Auntie was for me oh, to goodness gracious. your kid oh man uh, yeah presents we're gonna have to, lay, up the we're have to lay down some rules for that no absolutely no budget let's no. go let's go let's go our we have we have the best family in the world and our aunt spoiled us rotten as we oh, were kids goodness. and it was just so funny like one of my most fond childhood memories was our, our auntie would do something called we call her auntie also by the way yeah. like we don't call her like aunt london or aunt whatever <laughs> yeah she's in my just phone she's auntie, auntie. she's because yeah. we only have one i mean one that we really know well i yeah. mean we're a little distant from our other family just because of the age gap between my dad and his sister and mm -hmm. in, across the country so but uh yeah no we, she's always been around there and she's uh she was kind of the main person that would take care of us when mom and dad were gone oh my god really? wait because no, grandma and grandpa lived in a different state too when we were growing up yeah so. we don't like we have a very very small family mm -hmm. and auntie yes. told me the funniest story. wait actually first i have to say that auntie used to do this thing for us where she'd pick us up like after school or like we should take us out for the night or something and she would do this thing called quote unquote magic, magic yeah, where she would she'd that. be in the front of the car and she'd be like one two three abracadabra <laughs> look under the seat Kids and she'd so have have like candy or something we'd be like yeah let's we truly go. thought she was a, at least on my end i truly thought that woman was magic oh i thought she was a magician so, i thought she was like what's his name um david Chris Blaine? Angel? Oh, oh okay there we go we, we both got one <laughs> yes. we know our magicians i thought she was having a vegas residency like it was crazy it was unreal no okay do you remember we used to have that brown leather couch in the living room yeah and when she'd first come over she'd be like okay go to your room or whatever or uh -huh. you know close your eyes uh-huh all she would do is put the toy underneath the, the cush cushions oh, yeah. no, before I know. we sat there. Then no, we'd sit there and she'd be like, Dumb check kids. on your cushions. Yeah, our kids <laughs> Dumb are stupid. kids. I'm going to do that to mine the, all the time. He's going to think I'm incredible. The <laughs> day that I realized that Auntie would just put something under her seat before she drove over to our house. Oh, I didn't. Like, I never thought that into it. I was just happy so to be there. funny. She told me this funny story recently. I love hearing like funny stories about us when we were kids. And she said how... I guess every year she would, like she, I'm telling you what she was to me, I will be for your child, but she would uh, be the quote unquote Easter bunny for us every year. So she would Still bring does. over like lavish, lavish, like uh, baskets. baskets for us. You can tell them a story about when we didn't get one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Filled with like candy and Rats. toys and like, like massive ones. Like not just like a small, like she spoiled, that's rotten. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess one year she went, and I, I understand also from mom's point of view, like when you, like we don't need two baskets. So I'm sure she just got accustomed to us getting baskets from auntie every year. Oh, yeah. So like, she's like, oh, I don't need to check off my list. I would do the same. Got I would do the same. I was going to say, dad now, or I'll almost, bring the baskets. I would do the same. Yeah. Don't worry about that. You can check that off your list. Perfect. I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. And so I guess one year she went out of town and I'm sure it just slipped our mom's mind because like, she's so used to auntie having, bringing over the baskets. One year she forgot and we came or she, she wasn't there. So we didn't get one. Yeah. And I guess we came she down was out of town or something. and we were spoiled rotten. You guys, we would, we were like, where is the baskets? where's our baskets? And so when our aunt found out, I don't know if it was like the same weekend or the next year, maybe it was probably the next year, something 
we, we were told, you know, like the, the bunny couldn't come by this year. So mm-hmm. the next year, my, our aunt said she walks in and we had made signs going throughout the entire house. Oh, Easter bunny, directing. this way, this way, right here. Put it here. Do not forget. And we made it this big thing. We were young enough to like really think that, you know, Easter bunnies were a thing. So. Or we were like scammy. And no, no, we were not <laughs> scammy. We were not. They would have known because at that age, there's no way, you know, we wouldn't have been that upset. I don't think. I hope so. I mean, we were, we were, we were. We were little brats. Were we like, oh yeah, we were, we were. And, but that's because we were spoiled so much and I'm going to spoil your nephew, my nephew so much. Just keep the brat train going. Huh? Exactly. That's the, that is like the grandma and the aunt or uncle's job. And then like to yeah. give them back to you, like hopped up on sugar and like, bang. That's the grandparent. <laughs> that's what mom and, mom and dad get to do it. You know, I, they owe me a lot. So or I owe them a lot. <laughs> yeah, you I owe them a lot. lot. So yeah. whatever I did to them, because I, I mean, I was not an easy kid. That's for sure. No. You were, so, I mean, from ages probably... I don't even know, like eight to 14, you were a nightmare. Thank you. And yes. I was the angel child. You were. I and almost got sent to boarding school. I was that bad. A myriad of times. Not just I once. was so bad, you guys. I don't think they asked you doing it. I think it was a threat. And no, I think, I think they were the going time, to. I think at the time it was just very real for you and I because we can't really like get in a different perspective of like, they're not, why would they waste their money on that and like send their kid? No. But uh, yeah, no. That was, and then actually from 16 to like whatever, you know, 20 I was, or 18 in high school, like last year, I was like a lot more difficult, you know, <laughs> emotional and, you know. I get it. I mean. Wanting to blame someone for bad grades or not doing hormones. Well in sport. Yeah. Hormones raging. Yeah. Poor mom and dad. Superstars. All right, as a, a new almost father, do you feel a lot more like empathy for your, for our parents now? Truly, yes. I'll call dad probably once every few days and be like, hey, just want to tell you, I love you. Oh. Because you really don't, I feel like. Call mom. Like, don't call me out on the glass <laughs> like that. I was getting to her. I started with dad. <laughs> but um, I'll call him and just be like, I'll think about something that will stress me out. Like, you know, obviously not happening. I'll be like, what do, what do I do if, you know, I lose my job and then Lily's only working and we have the kid or we both lose our job and we have the kid. You lose like, your job. You work for me. I know, but like, you know, well, I'm, <laughs> two jobs, you know what I mean, okay, in the yeah. future. So, <laughs> but pretty much it's, it's stressful. And I was like, you know, dad always like dealt with that, like 2008. Yeah. You and I had no idea what was going on, but that was probably one of the most stressful times in their lives and like yeah. the majority of parents, you know? Yeah. And they did such a good job kind of keeping it under wraps or keeping things under control and and uh, now being an adult and looking at the financial stressors of that and mm-hmm. just, you know, everything on top of it is it's a lot. And I was like, he's never once, dad never once raised his voice at us. He never called us anything bad, never put a hand on us. He's, he's an angel. Ani's like, Patience to the max. It's very impressive. He's a very He's my role man. model. If I can be half the dad he is, I will be set. Aww. Like, perfect. No, really think it, because dad didn't really grow up with a dad, too. So it's really spectacular that he can be such a good dad with no role model, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then mom. <laughs> I <laughs> love mom. Mom is just so loving. She's so, so loving. She's an incredible woman. You know, I always tell Lily about things. I was like, you're going to be just like her and try to do whatever it takes for your kid to go with, you know, what they need or what they want and like lose an arm, losing the leg, like not even <laughs> bad an eye for it. You yeah. know, she could yell at like the most evil person in the world. She wouldn't fear them as long Mom as, is passionate. as long as it's for her kids. Exactly. And I yeah. think that's a lot of mothers out there though. No, we are so lucky. You know? We were blessed with such, such amazing parents that honestly just, we had such incredible lives growing up and I'm so eternally grateful for them. And we're sitting here very with the lives we have because lucky. of them. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like, you know, mom and dad, I mean, I got a job and when I was like 16 to work at the orange circle and stuff, but like they didn't make me and I just wanted to do it because one of my friends was working. I was like, Oh, okay, sure. No, we were but so lucky. Very, very lucky. They, you know, took care of us like that. And, and it's nice to be able to share back and, you know, take care of them now and, That's and you know, treat them. And yeah, exactly. It's nice. And it's funny because they took care of us when we were kids and, you know, we're going to take care of them when they're older. Of course. Yeah. And also them coming to America when they were so young mm-hmm. and creating lives for themselves. I mean, thank God for our grandparents as well, but uh, being able to create the lives that they have now and give us the lives that we have, it's truly such a blessing. Yeah, like, okay, look at dad. Dad came here and you know, didn't have anything. And I we, want dad to come on the podcast. We grew up with the dad and grandma. Who, who gave us so much and like did so many things. And like, so we better do better than him if, if he came from nothing and did that well. So, oh yeah, dad and mom would be a fun time to have on. We should do a, a family a feud too. episode. I think they would get a little nervous Mom too. gets so mom, nervous. Mom and I are the same. But dad, I think would be like, la 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 well, la. He does so many presentations at work. He's a sales oh, guy. Exactly. I yeah, also love, work him up. do you love this too? I feel like growing. Also, we haven't even gone to the questions yet. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, keep okay, going. Okay, nice. 
we can go, we can make him go fast too. One of my favorite things about dad is when I like we'll call. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this when, especially being a girl and calling my dad. Like we don't have a ton in common, mm-hmm. so we'll call and he's just always checking up on me, like making sure that I'm good, making sure Cal's good. Um, and it's always like, "How's work? How's this? Okay, well you got to tell them, you know, phrase like this. So you know, <laughs> in my world, blah, 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 like in the business sense, he I'm like, okay, dad, I'm going to do business that. writing. Yes, he does. My dad speaks in business. He writing. speaks in business email, circling back. Following up. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I did mention, but. He says, so listen, like, this is what I would do. Yeah. So look. So listen. So, so look. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming up with this here and then. <laughs> so listen. Wait, we should call. Should we call dad right now and see if he'll be on the pod? Oh, my gosh. Let's that's see. up to you. He, he definitely could be a business writing professor, though. Let's let's call him. Let's see if he'll Even pick his up. texts are like that. <gasps> hey, Ron. Hey, dad. What you doing? I'm recording Pretty Basic with Shane. Oh, I forgot to, I, I didn't tell Shane, I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I forgot to find It's all good, Dad. He Thank you for me. trying. Thank you for trying. Thanks for trying. Told, I've got I a folder. Last night, I totally forgot. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. No worries. <laughs> hey, Dad. <laughs> what are you guys going to do? You're going to do a recording of what? We're recording right now. Yeah, Say hi here. to the podcast. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about how much he, he, we love you and mom, and he said that if he's half- the dad that you are, he'll be happy. Oh, I've told him that. Oh, yeah, you got, he'll do better. Aww. Not possible. Really, you not guys, possible. You guys, are, you guys are the love of mine and your mom's life. Oh, he's gassing up us. So, I know. He's it's because I told him we're recording. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dad, I love you. I'll call you You're later. Not really recording, are you? No, I are. am. Oh, Randy, don't don't put this on air. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love you. I'll call you later. Okay, okay bye. <laughs> don't put it on. One here. time, I tried to call Grandma, but she didn't pick up. Oh, she's, she's not, she, her phone's a flip phone. I, <laughs> so there's like, she keeps it just like in her room. Like no, on the I stand, know. And she's spends probably like 70, no, probably more. Like she is living it she up. She walks around, she hangs out with her friends. She, she works bingo. in her garden. Yeah, she goes to the exercise. She's thriving. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said earlier, you are, you do work for me and you're yes, technically my first ever employee. I am officially, yeah. So I'm you, your longest employee. That's right, Whitney. <laughs> 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 you are. When did you start working for me? Like 20? 28. When I was in living in Phoenix alone. So 20... 2018. Really? Mm-hmm, 2018. <gasps> what is that? Five years? I've done five vlogmases almost. Yeah. Oh, so sorry about that. Yeah, it's, it's good. It, it's gotten so much better. Like I've gotten you know, just, I remember the very first one when I was still kind of learning mm-hmm. and oh my goodness, each one would take me like a, cause you used to, your vlogs used to be shorter too. So it'd be like a 15 minute vlog and it would take me probably like four hours at least. Oh. Right. And that's just, just, that's just rough editing too. Yeah. But you know. <laughs> No, it's just as time progresses. You have to learn, though, yeah. yeah. now I can see the waveforms and I can literally guess when you're going to. You're so quick now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can do it real quick. Like, yeah. Depending. Well, sometimes you'll make more mistakes than others, but if it's one where you make like, <laughs> not like a, a medium amount of mistakes, I can like knock it out knock real quick. Out. Yeah. If it's not too long. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I love having you work with me because it's, I mean, why not? First of all, keep it in the family. And second yeah. of all, I just love that we get to, like, I love that you know what's going on in my life. I love that we get to catch up in that sense. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's it's nice because, I mean, you're so busy, too, that we don't have the time. And we live far apart. So yeah. it's not like we have the time to see each other, like, multiple times a week or anything like that. So it's nice being able to, like, have a, you know, go back and forth. And, you know, work's just part of it because it's, it's so easy now between you and me, I feel like. It's just like, hey, sending, like, a, a vlog, and then I'll be like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I got time tomorrow, so I'll do it then. And it's just so. It's like a know. constant flow of communication, mm-hmm. and I feel like me being like, "Oh, hey, I'm sending a vlog now. What's up?" Like it starts like a conversation, and we're like catching up more too. Yeah, exactly. Which is good. Yeah, I know. Because I mean, before, I mean, when in college, I was busy, and then you know, you were kind of starting to take off more and, and do more things. Then so we kind of not grew apart, but we our communicate. It was like a friend that you could talk to whenever you know. I yeah. mean, siblings obviously, but yeah, and we'd come back and you know see each other. Or when we when you took me on my twenty first birthday to the uh, Wolf Mountain Sanctuary, I just you took me to that. the last bookstore. Yeah, the, was, is that what's called the last? Yeah, bookstore? the last bookstore. Yeah, the place is really cool. I need to take Lily and her sisters. There, actually, it's it's really cool. You should. Mm-hmm. We should go back to that Wolf Sanctuary. That was cool. They won't like the Wolf Sanctuary. Oh. Or Lily won't. She'll be scared. I'm sure. I understand. They they yeah. loved you. Looking Do you back that? now, I was because ter- I had coconut something in my hair, like some coconut oil. Oh, so, they yeah. were all over you. Yeah, it was kind of scary looking back. I was like, <laughs> wow, because there's a picture of him like with his mouth open right by. I mean, like, good fit, yeah. probably three fourths of my head in there, you know. So, yeah, was Shane really had cool. a, a hyper fixation on wolves for a while. I did. I, did. <laughs> <laughs> I still love them. They're so cool. They're just like really big dogs. They, I mean, they are. They're dangerous. Did so it's you like know higher stakes? The two dog breeds that are the most similar to obviously, like all dogs now are or species are like derived from wolves. Mm-hmm. The two that are the most similar to wolves now, 
a husky. I can see that. And a shih tzu. A shih tzu, though. Yeah. I mean, I saw it on TikTok. I don't know if it's true. Oh, then I don't so believe I it. Look it up, TikTok, but I believe, believe it. it. And TikTok's I'm like, fake news. I mean, Daisy's fierce. You don't you agree? She is. She's. I mean, she's grumpy. She's so grumpy. She's not fierce. She's she, grumpy. It, they're going to training for a little bit. Oh, and yeah, I yeah. am so scared that, I mean, Luna's going to have fun. I think Momo's going to be anxious because she's just anxious in general. Mm-hmm. Daisy's going to come back and spit in my face oh, when she well, gets home. Well, they get to, once they're at that, if Shih Tzus are a very stubborn breed. No, there she's so mean, but I love her. Very so stubborn, just much. like Lila. You know, she's not mean; she's stubborn. Yeah, yeah. So the, I mean, once they're kind of rude in their ways, it's hard to train a dog. Like you know, she's but not. She's not even a bad dog. She's no, she's fine. so good. She's but so I'm old. like, they're all going together, all three of mine, and you, Sadie, your dog, For are all baby, going to yeah. little family, mm-hmm. um, little family training. So that's gonna be good. Sadie's gonna bug them and. And uh, bully him a little but bit. But Sadie and, and Momo get along, which is really sweet. I think, well, Sadie and Luna did too. Remember how Sadie was all really gentle with Luna when she yes. was there? Yeah, and that, that kind of surprised me too, because I know Sadie has two modes. It's like extremely, extremely hyper yeah. or sleep and cuddle. Shane has a doodle, and doodles are Maybe doodles. crazy. She's 20 pounds, so she's like, she's a little guy. She's like this big, you know? She's, she's bigger. Long. She's bigger than that. You baby your dogs. You're going to baby your dog more than you baby your baby. That's what everyone's I saying. I swear. You're just like, oh, she's so, she's so I like people. She's like jumping on Lily and I, and he's like, it's okay. She's just really excited. She is. Yeah. It's just so cute. Like, if I had, imagine having like a friend every time you get home, just like, so, like, that makes their day. Uh-huh. It's so cute. Like, the, their best part of their day is seeing you. And, like, I love that. It's, she's always been there for me, no matter what. Dogs are the best. No, if they're you, the best. Dogs are the best. You treat them well, they'll treat you better. It's, it? oh, I love that. Guys, Mother's Day is right around the corner, and let me just say, I usually always forget. It's horrible. I'm just being honest. My mom's birthday is also in May, so I feel like I just, you know, I usually forget. But that is not going to be the case this year for me because I already have my mom's Mother's Day present thanks to Macy's. If you guys didn't know, Remy and I actually put together an entire pretty basic custom gift guide. So for this Mother's Day, whether you're shopping for your mom, your grandma, maybe it's an aunt or even a friend who feels kind of like a mom figure in your life, This is the best gift guide because we have everything you could ever need to help find the perfect special gift for a mom or moms in your life. Also, this Mother's Day in particular is very, very, very special for my family because it is the first Mother's Day that my sister-in-law is becoming a mother. It's also the first Mother's Day that my mom is becoming a grandma. So I'm just really excited. My grandma's becoming a great grandma. I mean, I'm becoming an aunt. It's just like a really special day for my family and I'm just really excited to celebrate with everyone. I'm just, I have a big smile on my face as I'm saying all this, I'm beaming. So obviously this Mother's Day is like a very big special one, but in general, just Mother's Day is an amazing day to obviously celebrate all of the mothers and motherly figures that you have in your life and just say thank you to them and just show them your love and appreciation for everything that they do because moms are absolute superheroes and we just love them so, so much. If you guys are like me and you have a mom in your life who is so hard to buy for, then Macy's is absolutely amazing for you guys, but maybe she is, you know, like a cook or a fashionista, an athlete, a traveler, whatever it may be. We have gifts on our guide for pretty much every mom out there. You guys can check it out at macy's.com slash pretty basic. We have everything on there from like skincare. Maybe your mom's like a skincare junkie. We have the Kiehl's face cream that not only do I and my mom love, Cal loves. It's just a great gift for absolutely everybody. Also the Ninja Nutri Blender Pro. I love a blender. My mom, my love for kitchen appliances came from my mom. So she's going to love that. There's also like the Blendjet Portable Blender. So, so many fun little kitchen appliances. And then also we have the Kate Spade Initial Necklace on there, which I think is such a great gift. I think I'm actually going to get that for my sister-in-law Lily and I think it'd be so much fun to get her a necklace with her son's initial on there because it's so special and what an amazing first Mother's Day gift to receive. So truly if you guys are stumped to get any gifts for any motherly figures in your life then check out Macy's. They have literally everything from clothing to kitchen appliances to bedding to literally everything under the sun. So they are absolutely amazing. So hopefully Pretty Basic and Macy's can help take some of that shopping stress away. Just go to macy's.com slash pretty basic. You will find an entire pretty basic landing page we have everything for every type of budget macy's has literally anything you can need if your mom's more into cozy maybe a spa night you can get her nice slippers a robe don't worry macy's has you covered again check out macy's.com slash pretty basic and thank you again to macy's for working so closely with us and allowing us to share our picks with our fans one more time you guys can find our picks at macy's.com slash pretty basic that's macy's.com slash pretty basic One of my biggest regrets in my life is that I never kept up learning Spanish when I was taking it in school. I took three years and I feel like I really don't have much to show for it. 
honestly, one of my goals in life is to be able to say that I'm bilingual. I mean, I mean, I have to be perfect at it, but definitely enough to understand and have a conversation with someone, especially with how much I travel. I feel like this, there's just been times where knowing another language is one of the biggest powers you can have in this world. So when Rosetta Stone wanted to partner with our podcast, I got really excited because I felt like, you know what, this is finally my time. If you don't know what Rosetta Stone is, they are literally the expert in language learning for over 30 years, and they have an award-winning app where you can learn anytime, anywhere. The best part is there's 25 languages, so I personally really want to learn Spanish, but they have 25 languages from Spanish, French, Italian, German, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Dutch, Arabic, Polish, The best part is that it's in bite-sized pieces so you can learn and actually make real progress in as little as 10 minutes a day. Like we all have 10 minutes a day. It really prepares you for life. It goes beyond just vocab and it focuses on speaking practice, pronunciation with their true accent feature and so much more. It's super immersive and intuitive with learning. There's no tedious memorization needed. Unlike my high school where I just memorized stuff and quickly forgot it after the test. Like I said, I really do think this would come so in handy for me just with traveling and stuff, or maybe maybe you're wanting to connect with a loved one, or maybe you're just wanting to pick up a new skill and keep your brain sharp. For a limited time, our listeners can get Rosetta Stone's Lifetime Unlimited subscription, which gives you access to all 25 of their languages forever. For 40% off, visit rosettastone.com basic today. Rosetta Stone, how language is learned. Also, everybody, if you watched my my Vlogmas video where I was able to well, plan did, your job. Not you. I'm talking to the audience. I know you watched them, (laughs) obviously. The gender reveal. I was able Um, to throw you like a surprise gender mm -hmm. reveal. I found out about the gender of the baby before you guys found out. And we got to do like a little party for it. It was so much fun. And you are having a... Boy. A boy. Which I really thought it was going to be a girl. I think everybody kind of wanted a girl. And that's what it seemed. Lily. I know Lily wanted a girl. Her sister's the only one person who... I think, I don't even know if dad wanted a girl or boy. I, I think, think he dad was didn't unsure. care. Yeah, dad really didn't care. <laughs> he was just excited but to be I know there. Lily's middle sister, Joss, wanted um, a, a boy. Aww. And she was the one who found out with you first. Yes. She was actually the first person. So it was kind of, you know, a good She's coincidence. So oh, yeah, they're the best. But. She was so sweet. And mom was so sure it was a girl. Yeah, every we only had girl names picked up. If, up really? Until, yeah, we had all the names planned not one boy name. And then that's how it All goes. All girl names. That's yeah, how exactly. It goes. Um, Shane is horrible with secrets. And he would ask me every day, multiple times a day, texting me, don't reply if it's a boy or reply if it's a girl or whatever, like every day. And I kept it in. I kept it in. Um, but <laughs> I obviously found out it was a boy and we were all so excited. No matter what gender you had, we were all excited as long as the baby is healthy. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of us were also relieved, at least on our side of the family, that it was a boy first. Because I feel like with boy babies, you know, they, they're a little bit more... Uh, what is the word I want to say? Oddly enough, everybody I've talked to, every single person, even like the, I was talking to a progressive lady the other day, just trying to make sure our insurance. A progressive lady? <laughs> yeah, make sure we're, we're maxed out on flow. discounts and it everything. Flow. No, it wasn't flow, <laughs> but same same company. And um, she was just telling me, she's like, I was like, oh yeah, I just want to make sure we're maxed out on discounts and everything like that. Everything's set because we're having a baby next month, you know? So I want to make sure that we're, you know, getting every dollar we can, blah, blah. She's like, oh yeah. She's like, do you guys know if it's a boy or a girl? And I was like, yeah, it's a boy. And she's like, oh that's easy. She's like, <laughs> we have a boy. We had our boy first. We have a girl. The girl is in middle school now. We're just trying to get her out as soon as we can. <laughs> She's like, let me tell you, a boy, give him love and he'll be a good person. Oh. And I was like, oh, I don't think it's that easy, but okay, sure. I, I mean, I would think boys, you can just like. Pete's delivery guy said the same thing. <laughs> well, I'm excited. So I talk about it with that's everyone. That's so cute. He's like, oh yeah. He's like, what are you guys doing now? I'm just hanging out. We're like setting up the baby room. So we're having one now. He's like, oh, he's like, because. Yeah, well, Domino's? Also, I see a lot Pizza? of people. Yeah. They'll have pictures of their kids like on their dash, you know? Oh. I'm like, oh, such a cute baby. And he'll be like, oh yeah. He's like, yeah. So I like, love that. Domino's? Pizza Hut? Uh, Papa John's? Actually, Pizza Hut. Love. Love yeah. Pizza Hut. I think. People wouldn't actually know. I, I think people now like, uh, learning who you are first glance would like, expect a little more. Um, mm-hmm. But you are really sensitive. And so <laughs> and you're just so caring and you've always been like that. And when I found out it was a boy, I was excited because I was like, OK, with a girl, I do think you have to be like a little bit more gentle. Like boys, you like they can rough around on the playground. Mm-hmm. Like you were always like coming home with like scratches and bruises and like fighting with your friends. Whereas girls do like you worry about a little more. And yeah, they being, play differently, so they're not used to as much. And you grow up that way. Yeah. I think also just with like for me being the older kid and being a girl, um, I was definitely like the guinea pig with mom and dad. I definitely, I yeah. was de- yeah. We'll talk about that. I had a lot yeah stricter rules. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously 
you know, being a parent to a daughter, I do feel like parents have to worry a little bit more, obviously, because men suck. You have to worry about Thank their you. safety. You're <laughs> yeah. welcome. Safety and things a little bit, a little bit more. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, actually, a lot of bit more. It's but just the sad reality of things, it, it, it's true. And yeah, I'm sure you're going to say that you had was boy because I'm going to be less. Worried. You're going to be <laughs> a neurotic parent. And so when I heard it was boy, I was like, oh, OK, he can. It's good because you can learn I mean, I don't even know what it's like to be a parent, but you can, you know, test it out a little bit, dip your toe in the water with a boy, and then you can be <laughs> your full neurotic parent level when it, when you have a daughter eventually. Mm-hmm. Because I remember even like getting my ears pierced. That was like my, I think, how old was I? 12? 8 or 12? Right. I think maybe Good eight. age range, right? Yeah. I, maybe yeah, like 12. Eight to 12. So you maybe were, like you were 10. I got my ears pierced at the piercing pagoda at the Brea Mall, which is like a little kiosk. Oh, you're right. No, you're right. It was the kiosk kiosk in the the middle middle of the mall. Mm -hmm. And that was my big gift from my parents. So I went and got my ears pierced. And I was like, so I was nervous, but I was like, you can do it, Remy, you can do it. And my mom and I turned around because we can't find you came with us. And Shane was hiding behind the trash can in the mall crying because he was so worried that my ears (laughs) were going to (laughs) hurt. Uh, you're like you're just so loving and caring and you've always been so protective uh, of me so when i found out it was a boy i was like Phew, okay you're because like you know if the boy like falls on the playground you're gonna worry a little bit less i think than if mm-hmm. your daughter like fell off the slide you, i can you remember would all be- your major injuries for sure because it was very traumatic for me as a kid because i would just worry you don't want your siblings to get hurt or whatever Aww. especially you know your sister like, do you remember when uh, <laughs> we were at the park riding with dad? You got your big old knee cut. Oh, my but God. Your yeah. knees have taken a beat. And then MRSA infection. I dance. know. That I almost lost a knee right there. You're telling me, that man. Me? I lived it. You're man, telling crazy. me. What else? What else? other things have you had? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about all my ailments. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it wasn't that many. Those were kind of the two that stand out. And yeah, that's, yeah, we were pretty healthy, I feel like. Right? <laughs> Really? This conversation took a turn. Yeah, we're pretty, pretty, yeah. We're pretty decent. We're pretty actually. Good. No, I, about, I don't want to get myself paranoid about, you know. <laughs> but no, you're, you're right. It was nice that it was a boy for me because like you said, it just, it takes a little bit off me and thinking, I, I think because I can relate to it more. I'm like at 18, I felt like I could handle myself walking home somewhere at night. And yeah, that's the, the sad reality of it though. And, you know, with my daughter, if I do have a daughter, it would, you know, I would definitely worry more, more about yeah. her being able to, you know, get away or defend herself and things like that. Or, yeah, you know, so it, it was definitely nice like that. But I will say, that hopefully me and Lily are not too, you know, helicopter parent or too <laughs> stressed out about the boy. I think Lily, Lily and I are similar in that way. We're both very caring and, and empathetic yeah. towards the people we love and care about. So hopefully we can like nice find a nice middle like mom and dad, you know, between worrying and, and being, you know, kind of whatever. Yeah. But not too much whatever. But I you feel know like what I'm you, saying? The you happy will. Meeting. And that's like through trial and error and mm-hmm. and Having a guinea pig child, mom and dad. Exactly. Yeah, I need to talk about that. Yeah. Because Lily's a first child too, so now I, I hear the, the ends of it from you and her. Being a firstborn, being a firstborn daughter, and then being a firstborn daughter to immigrant parents, it is it is a whole other world. Let me just tell you that. You're just getting stacked one no, on you're telling me, man. He had it so easy. So easy. Uh, yeah, I remember. Actually, yeah, I did. I really did convert to you in some ways. Oh, that was so sweet of you to acknowledge. Thank you. Well, I think it would be because, I mean, think about it. You used to, like, uh, the phone thing. If you really want to start all the way back to the phone thing. Okay? <laughs> Let's start my Kids flight. are getting phones in, like, first grade now. So I feel like this conversation's are relevant. But, <laughs> you know, uh, back in the day, they used to have the family plans for phones. You mm-hmm. know, this is when Sprint existed still before they were bought out by whoever they are bought out by. But They got bought out? I'm, I'm assuming they did. I haven't seen anything. I'm probably, I think they did by you know, T-Mobile. I, I talked about a couple episodes back how we had Sprint mm-hmm. and how we'd always have like the Sprint version of a cool, of a phone. cool phone. I remember oh. we had the Katana. <laughs> the Racer. Instead of the Racer. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I was just sad. I was just, <laughs> sad. At least it was blue. It was just blue. I was telling Alicia how I would bet on Razors on eBay. But oh, bid on them and yeah, try to get Yeah, yeah, and but And I'd win sometimes. Did you know it wouldn't work. And dad would be like, why you, you, we, why would you get this? Oh my goodness. Yeah. But no, yeah, getting the phone things. I think you got yours sixth grade. Fifth grade. Fifth grade I got mine in third because of the family plan thing. So yes. you, you know, got the bat on the stick there for sure. And I just got lucky. I, I feel like a lot of older siblings can relate to this. Like mm-hmm. your parents are so strict about, um, everybody in here is a younger sibling, but, uh, uh-huh. unite. <laughs> <laughs> it's so Alicia can relate to this too, I bet, or not with me, with you. Mm-hmm. Um, how, you know, there's such so strict plans. Like you can't do this till this age. You can't wear makeup to this age till this age. You can't get a computer till this age. You can't do this till this age. You can't get your license till this age. And then once you hit that threshold, then I feel like the parents just, I'm like, eh, whatever. So yeah. for instance, I really wanted a phone because we walked home from school and I also just wanted a phone so I could text my friends. Walked home like 
350 yards, <laughs> 350 yards max. But for our safety in the sun. Mm-hmm. And I'd just be like, mom, I really want a phone, please. Like everyone's getting phones. I want everyone's getting phones. And then finally they got me a phone. They're like, and Shane gets a phone. Do you remember when we got phone? them? Do you remember the restaurant? No. Really? What restaurant? Augie's Pizza or OG's, <gasps> however you want to say it. Oh my God, they give it to us there. OG's Pizza, the by sprint, the village. The mall where we got Lila. Exactly. <gasps> well, yeah, same Lila. thing happened with computer. I remember uh, growing up, our mom oh, was true. very too. into school. And so like on summer breaks, which she would love to come on and tell us that she didn't, you know, whatever but she would take us to like teacher supply schools oh my god like teacher supply stores and buy like extra books extra like little like packets and things to do during summer and i would always have to do my homework like till a certain time and i'd be doing my homework Mm -hmm. and i'd look outside and you were playing outside with your friends and we have this like how like this room in the front of our house i do remember that was you can view the street that's okay thank you you're younger so i guess you're going into mills like i guess you start buckling down for high school buckling down for college used to tell us they would look at our middle school grades lies (laughs) She Lies. did. She did. Lies. I got straight A's my seventh grade, my first semester or whatever, whatever the heck it is, semester, quarter, El Rancho, right? Uh-huh. Got straight A's. I thought I was going to be like treated like awesome. She was just like, good job. You should be doing it. I was like, <laughs> like, okay. That's, right? and that's I thought Asian they parents, And this one I was doing starting tennis too, so I was really busy. Yeah. Found out. No, my coach told me. Mm. <laughs> Saying get C's and just play the way you're playing, you'll get a scholarship. You're fine. You don't have to worry about it. As long as you keep the C's. <gasps> She's not happy about that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nuh-uh. That's so funny, though. C's don't mean degrees in an Asian yeah. household. Yeah, nope. Absolutely not. So you get excommunicated from an <laughs> Asian family. <laughs> yeah, our mom was very, like, very strict. I mean, did we did we get straight A's? No. But no, she tried. Sometimes, you know, we, we, did, we, I feel like we, we did, did okay. For our family group. Of Asians that we grew up horribly, scholars, we're the worst. Ivy League, we're kids. the dumbest for sure. I mean, I would say, education wise, I would say ele- intelligence and education are two different things. I, I agree. mean, because you and I had to think a lot more for ourselves because I feel like we weren't as controlled, mm. so we made more mistakes and thus learned from those mistakes, right? Yeah. But definitely, yeah, we weren't the you know the best, and she would definitely compare us. But it's hard not to compare your you know kids or people you love, or just she just was using as an example. She wanted us to do good, so that way we can you know, make a lot and go to, you know, just whatever your parent wants. What are your thoughts on college for your kid? I know that's 18 years down the line, but. Yeah, unfortunately, college and, and a degree is something you, you kind of need today to progress in, in your workplace, you know, or you kind of plateau and you'll kind of hit a, you know, paywall. But it is just, it's the worst thing. College is the worst. I it's, mean. It could all be done online. Campuses cost so much money. It's the reason for inflated tuition, everything like that. And colleges aren't making it easier for people to afford, you know? Because think mm-hmm. about it, you could buy one textbook. And I mean, I spend like usually around $250 for a class on a textbook, right? <gasps> and it's so sad because it's like the school could get the, uh, you know, publishing to give it out, you know, or just work out some kind of deal where only they give it to the people in the class. But instead, it's like, it's just a cash cow. It's, you know, like Cal, I think the number one employed, you know, area in California is the California universities. And really yeah so it's like a lot of people obviously and that, that's not like a correlation of like how much they're making but it, it's tough because you i mean i'm in i'm in still in school so i see all these things and you know these kids posting about things and like there's kids who can't afford like anything like that and it's really sad to see like kids will literally not be able to afford a book and you look at the cost of it and you're like if that kid didn't have parents and they're 18 living alone there's no way they're able to afford it so mm-hmm. then they're kind of stuck it's it's what people say is it's expensive to be poor because mm-hmm. It, it truly is because you get worse credit, you get worse, yeah. you know, your payments yeah. are things, You, it's, it, it all adds up and yeah. Yeah, so once you affect like that 18 year old using his credit to buy his textbook and stuff, that's so sad. That's, Ruining that's his credit at 18 because he doesn't have parents and things like that. I want to cry. Yeah, it's sad. Really it's, it exciting. happens to a lot. It happens a lot. And uh, yeah, so on my kid, I guess, obviously, like I would want them to go to school just for that, the main reason behind it, but I'm not full pro school, you know, I think yeah. education challenge, like I said, is a different thing. I mean, the education system in general, it needs a lot of work. Education, and healthcare in this country. That's the two. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Regarding Cash just cows. like college within itself, it's, I, it, I like hearing your perspective because obviously in the line of work that I'm in, I mean, I personally dropped out of school, but a, a lot of my peers also did drop out of school or didn't finish. Yeah, so I mean, I technically dropped out for a little bit and because yeah. I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. I was doing political science at Oregon and I, wasn't a fan, right? It was too much. And the goal was to be a lawyer. And I think kind of at that time with mom and dad, or not to blame them fully, but since you and I were kind of like not controlled, but you know, we couldn't go out and do everything. So <laughs> when I got to college, I could have fun and do whatever I wanted. It was like freedom. It was the first time anybody in our family has been out of state, you know? So um, that, and then, you know, the partying and stuff with school, it's just like too much, you know, wasn't doing well. And the cost of out of state just wasn't worth it. So 
I was like, okay, I'm going to go. And I did the motorcycle mechanic school for BMW, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I did that. And that essentially is a trade degree, right? So you're not actually getting a degree. And that's where I kind of felt what I was talking about where I was like maxed out. I could be working for, you know, BMW or whatever for six years. I'm eventually going to hit a wall and I'm going to be facing that same thing. Oh, should I go and get a degree then or what? Mm -hmm. So that's when I was like, after I finished, got my degree or my certificate, my silver certificate there. I was like, okay, I kind of bit my pride and was like, oh, I'm going to start school again. And unfortunately, I had to start from all the beginning over. I didn't because all my credits from Oregon are quarter system. California, these schools most of the time are, are semester system. Got so you lose it. credit there already. And then on top of it, political science and uh, operations and supply management or business analytics, the classes don't really course over, you know, because yeah. it's a lot more quantitative stuff versus qualitative information. So. Yeah. So I, you know, it took a while, but I guess, you know, now it's, it's looking up that you have a lot more opportunities with the degree because it is a, a minimum requirement at a lot of places. So if you don't have a degree, I would say like, it is a lot of, about who you know, and if you can, you know, get connected to the right people and they can see that you're like, oh, this person's intelligent. They just don't have a degree for, you know, X reasons. So, I mean, I think in like this, in the industry that I'm in, in, in like entertainment, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need a degree, Oh, definitely. but not. in pretty much every other industry, it does definitely help to have your degree. Yeah. And I feel like that could get you, whether it's a higher pay grade or just open more doors or things. Um, I totally agree with all of that. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that your career journey or your school journey and, and leading into your career journey has been, I mean, I know it's been really hard on you and you work so hard and you do so oh. well in school. Yeah. And you're well, 20. I felt like I have to do good. I mean, that was my whole thing. I was like, I did not the best before. So I was like, if I'm going back, I have to really like, you know, tie my boots a little tighter and Buckle I'm proud of here. you though. You get like straight A's. You're going to graduate yeah, next you. year, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll be 27 well, when you graduate. It could have be, been this, it's this fall or, or spring, depending okay. on how many classes I want to take in the summer. But I feel like with my internship and stuff and then also baby. So yeah, I was like, oh, I'll put it off. And the only Space thing, it, it, it prolongs the cost of it, everything, you know, because you're taking, you know, fewer classes each semester. So you are still paying, you know, full time or half time or, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But in the, in the end of things, it, it's worth it because it's, you know, time is valuable. So. Absolutely. I think a lot of people listening, though, can relate to your journey. I truly, when I was in school, I was going to, I was trying to be a PA. I was going for psychology and I was going to go, you know, yeah, to you're going school. for some difficult things. But I mean, I, I left school hoping that YouTube would take off. But my whole thing, my whole deal with mom and dad was like, if it doesn't work out, then I'll just go back to school. Do you remember when I said I'd sell my car to keep you in school? Oh, Do you remember that? No. Oh my God. I don't know why. It was, I had my white Mustang at the time and I was like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I thought it was a financial thing or what. <laughs> so so I was like, I'll sell my car. Mom did not want me to drop out, which uh, from a parent. Now yeah, exactly. you understand from a parental yeah, exactly. standpoint, I understand how that was probably worrying for mm -hmm. her because. Because it's like, why not just finish? It's two years of your life. It's, you know such a small amount of time why not just get it done you're halfway there get it done and then do whatever you want you know at least yeah. you have that there it's a lot easier than going back and i can say that from first you know well i was gonna say dropping out and if it didn't work out i would have had to go back to school obviously but i think i would have found myself on a very similar trajectory where i just it, the fact that the society expects you to graduate high school and know what you want to do with your whole life at 18 is really crazy mm -hmm. and i honestly kind of fell into I mean, I knew I like wanted to help people and I, and I know that also like with having, you know, mom standards, I knew she really wanted me in the, you know, she was supportive of me being in the medical field. She wasn't forcing me to oh, do yeah. that, but, um, you know, I would, that's kind of why I was doing it. But now, I mean, sometimes I get shots and I get woozy. Like the, the fact that I thought that I was going to be, I, I didn't, I didn't have any experience in that, but the fact that I had chosen that for myself at 18 and would have, you know probably pursued that is just wild to me. And I think if I had gone back to school after dropping out, I think I would have probably switched up and it would have put me behind. So I think like the trajectory that you're on is also very common for people. And I commend you for trying things that you love and, you know, seeing that to whatever it may be. And then if, if you decide, you know, like maybe this isn't something I want to do forever. I think it's great that you went back to school and you're switching things up and now you're in, in business and you can apply that to something else in your life because mm -hmm. ultimately you want to be happy. Yeah, exactly. I, I completely agree with that. And it was nice being able to, you know, have my venture of, of passion and go and, you know, try to build motorcycles and race them and all things like that. So it's nice because I can look back and as a kid where, you know, I mean, as you get older, your body takes a beating, you know, my ears are like permanently messed up from the motorcycle stuff. So, oh, yeah. that's why mm -hmm. they're really sensitive. Yeah. From all the wind noise and everything like that and the wind tunnels and the dyno rooms. So, yeah, they're really sensitive. And at least I can look back and be like, hey, I did that. I enjoyed it a lot, but it wasn't the future I wanted, you know? Yeah. Coming home every day with your hands just absolutely mauled from burning hot things and oil and just gunk in between and just, 
being bent over every day and all that stuff. It was a lot. And, you know, now going and just doing class stuff is, you know, it's, it's a lot better for sure. Are so. you enjoying school? Um, yeah, sometimes I'll get a little like angry where I'm just like, I don't even need to be here right now. This could be online. <laughs> well, you're I'm in like the craziest today. stuff. You're in you're in the craziest classes. When you sent me that math equation, medical, you were doing? I would say medical is a lot harder. Well, yes, obviously, yes. <laughs> yeah, medical, chem, and then I would say like quantitative stuff like analytics, right? Yeah, or actually, well, comp comp side. There's a lot harder finance. Well, I I there are certainly hard things, but like mm-hmm. even just that math equation you're doing was really well, yeah, crazy. See, I would have if I didn't go back and start fresh, like as a true freshman almost, I wouldn't have had that like kind of, you know, math base to build because you forget math, you know? So going back and starting from there, I like redid calc, calc one, calc two, like single variable, double variable. And I did it all and I was like, okay. So I had like a really solid base. So this stuff's a lot easier now versus the gap I had, you know? Because you and I were terrible at math growing up because we were so bad. We're so, we just didn't want to do it because we had, we're forced to like, come on. I was telling Shane before he came on, I was like, think of some of your favorite childhood memories for us. And we thought of how our mom put us in come on, which I feel like a lot of people probably were in that where Mm -hmm. you like had, it was like a tutoring system specifically for math because Shane and I were really, really, really bad at math. And you would go we were even after bad, school. Actually, I was kids, There's no way we were bad at elementary school's addition. There's no way we were terrible, right? Well, no, yeah. But like once we got to high school or college, I was so bad Because I was bad in high school for Kumon. Thank God. No, yeah, we were. Oh, you're, you know what? School. We were kids. Yeah, we were babies. But we were, she would take us to um like this after school tutoring thing where they'd just give you Honestly, like 15, 12 to 15 packets. Some of them were thick. That were like pages and pages and pages of just, because a lot of math is repetition. And it was Mm -hmm. just equation on equation, whether it was addition, subtraction, long division, the quadratic formula, whatever it may be. It was over and over and over. And like us being dumb kids, we'd get like 15 packets and we would stuff like- All do by like two days, Yeah, and we'd stuff like, okay, well, two in my dresser, two here, two there. As if they couldn't count them. Everywhere, hide them everywhere. (laughs) I probably could still find them if we went home. You know the- Downstairs, we have that table. Yeah, like, that thing by, by, the up by the window. Guaranteed, if you go through those school books, you'll find. Or it. if they're like, you were better at it than me. You did more than me, but I will say because you were in high school, so you had a lot more rigorous stuff versus a, a middle schooler. But it's just so funny because obviously they knew how many they gave us, and we, if we came back with two, obviously we didn't. We put the thirteen somewhere else, mm-hmm. which is just so funny. That kids, we also talked about dumb. how we would hide our report cards. Yeah. <laughs> well, not high. We would intercept them. Yeah, we'd intercept, intercept them. Intercept them because back in the mail time. Yeah. Do you, now they that's don't do that were, anymore. That's huh? when for our first formed our first like uh, team teamwork there. Right? <laughs> no, <'cause>, team building <laughs> skills. Yeah, exactly. Like brother, sister got your back. So we would get home from school every day. We'd walk. And then we obviously would pass our mailbox. So me and her would look in the mailbox to see if our report card came when it came towards the end of the time, you know? And we would, if it was, if I saw Rami's in there, I'd snatch her. If she saw mine there, she'd snatch mine, right? And we would just kind of hide them. Because, you know, this is mail. Like back in the day, mail, they didn't have everything online. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about- Well, this is like 2002, 2003. Yeah, we're talking like we're like 50 years old, six years old. But yeah, she couldn't log on to like our Aries account and view it. That wasn't a thing back then. So she uh, would just- (laughs) She'd ask us, it's been like two weeks since then. Where's the thing? You're like, oh, the everyone around Scott there is on our street. And we're like, I don't know. Mom, ask our teacher. Like, like, and you and I would just prolong this game. I think Suzanne knew in the back of her head. you know. Well, she, of course, knew. Yeah, and she was like, you know what? I don't even need to see him. These kids are terrible. She is so funny. Kids are little tyrants. I remember she also mm, would tell dumb. me how. This, was, this gave me really good perspective on mom. Because mom had me around the time, around the age that I am currently. In a couple of years, I'll be 31, which oh, is when she f- had me. Yeah. And so it just, as you get older, and I'm sure you're relating to that, especially with a baby on the way, how you just relate to your parents more and you understand why they yeah. did things that they do. And you're a little easier on them because you're like, how did they do it? You have a lot how more respect for them. Yeah. And they're also, they also are, you know, at the age that they are now for the first time, they're experiencing things for the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember one story that really stuck with me is she, we would walk to school, but I I swear I'd get to school sometimes and like didn't have shoes. I didn't have like a backpack. I just like didn't have like- When you'd walk? My homework. Yeah, like I, they're just like, I would forget things a lot. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Mom would bring stuff for you. And so she would bring them until finally one day she was like, Remy, if I have to bring your homework again for you next time, you're walking home. And I remember thinking she was so mean for doing that to me. And then lo and behold, like a week later, I forgot my homework. Uh So I- went to the principal's office. I call. I'm like, Hey, can you bring me my, my homework? And she's like, no, I told you walk home. So I walked home and I had to get my, my homework and then walk back to school again. But the whole time she followed me in her car. And I remember being like, why don't you just pick me up? Like, why, th- why are you doing this to me? Tough love. And then I asked her like a couple mm-hmm. years ago, I was like, so like, 
that's a very vivid memory for me. Um, like, why did you do that? And she's like, the whole time I was just like worried that like something was going to happen to you. I was like laughing because it was funny. And I was just like, now if I were a parent and my kid did the same thing, I'd be like giggling, like watching them like, tr- you know, drag their feet, like all upset. Like it's funny, <laughs> it's funny, but it's also like, you're worried about them. But I just thought it was funny because being in that mindset, I was like, oh my God, like why won't my mom pick me up? Like this is so crazy. And like, you're just being like a little brat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess, yeah, being or expecting and, and being a parent, you get to see a whole new perspective on how the things were handled, you know? Yeah. It is stressful, yeah. And I could see like mom and dad, when I wanted to go leave school and, and join, in my thing they probably were like, yeah, you sure i remember mom specifically telling me she went <laughs> i hate this because she was so right she's gonna love this <laughs> yeah. she told me when i was gonna go to school if you do this you sure you're not gonna want to go back to school after and just want to finish now and then go do it after and i was like no mom this is my destiny this is what i want to do this gets my heart pumping when i wake up in the morning she's like, fixing right, motorcycles then i'll, then I'll support you and i'll support you and everything but just so you know, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you, I told you so if I was right. <laughs> and she told you. I told her she could tell me. I, I know. I think I think it's better for her. She knows that I know, you know. But go do your ventures if it's something you really love because you're going to always want to do that. And it's better to get it done when you're young, you know. I love, I love how we're mom and dad young, parented us in the sense where they were like, mom especially, was like, I made the same mistakes. I did this. Like, you can either learn from those or you can make mistakes and learn on your own. And she... Most of the time we did that. Mm-hmm. 100% of the time we did that. Sometimes the best way to learn, Sally, is a mistake. Yeah, yeah agreed. Mm-hmm. This one goes out to all my fellow shopaholics out there. If you're into shopping or you are ready to splurge, this is the time to do so. Rakuten's Big Give Week is here again from May 8th to May 15th. You can get 15% cash back. If you don't know what Rakuten is, it's the smartest way to shop and save. They reward you with cash back at stores you love and on things that you're already going to buy. No, seriously, things that you're already going to be buying. You can save so much money on all of these stores. We're talking Fenty Beauty, Stuart Weitzman, Adidas, Key Australia, Glossier, Kate Spade, H&M, Urban Outfitters, Fabletics, Ninja Kitchen. So many stores that you are already shopping at. Why not get some money back? Hundreds of stores from fashion, beauty, travel, and so much more. It's just once a year and it's only eight days long. So make sure to join by May 15th to get 15% cash back. And the membership to Rakuten is free, and it's so easy to sign up and receive your cash back. Join for free at Rakuten.com or download the Rakuten app. It's the most rewarding way to shop. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. You know what story I told on the podcast a few weeks ago was when we were at the Luau as a ki- as kids, and I grabbed your shoulder. You always had your emotional support, Sippy Cup. Oh yeah, I should have been a running back with how well I held <laughs> you that could've. all of the time. And you're so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I went up behind you on the the stage, and I made your hip. Yeah, shake. and everyone loved it. Or yeah, whatever, they ate was, it up. Yeah, how old was I then? I think you were like two. I was a nugget. You I was a baby. not even there mentally, just you're physically. Just like, what is going on? There's what are these lights on? Nobody's home. Yep, <laughs> that's me. That's me. Oh yeah, it's oh my god, it's funny though. I, I mean. I don't actually remember, but I remember from pictures that we've seen. You know what I mean? From like those the things, The little yeah. blue outfits and things. Yeah, and, the matching. And just when you were with Alicia mm-hmm. the other day uh, at the place in Mary where you guys got the food, that's where we played at the pigs. Do you remember? Yeah, the outside with Jake and, El- yes! and Alexis. I Alexa, walked, Alexis, yeah. I walked down to Mama's Fish House mm-hmm. and I immediately was just. That little area. Oh, with the, the memories trees. Remember the palm back. trees that are sloped down and we'd all climb them. Yes. Which, yeah. You, me, Jake. Alexis, mm-hmm. we'd all do that stuff. We go to the uh, Dole like plantation things, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, it's a lot just, of memories there. It's really crazy. I feel like every family has like your parents' friends that also have kids your age that you met at school or whatever oh, church, yeah. and you like grow up together. And it's so crazy seeing where everybody's at now. Like Alexis. Uh, one of my friends growing up who was like our built-in built in best friend because of our lived parents. Right below us. Yeah, they lived right below us and mm-hmm. we could call them on the phone. Um, she just ha- she has a baby and she's married. It's just mm-hmm. so crazy seeing everybody growing up and being supportive of all of them. I think it's really cool. It is. It's funny. It's And now that me and Lily are, you know, about to have one, it's funny because you kind of see like we're at the age now where everyone's getting married and, and starting to have babies and stuff like that. And it's 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 crazy really like on you on facebook that's all you see right now is just baby 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 yeah. baby, wedding 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 exactly i feel yeah. old do you feel old i do feel old. i feel grown up you yeah. know like yeah i guess that's a better a more easy way of saying yeah i do feel a little old you've matured into a really i call mom all the time i'm like i love shane i just well, love, thank you. The, I love you too, really. the man that you've i want to call you a boy because you're my little brother but the man <laughs> that you've grown into like i I know we've gone through our rough patches as all siblings do. And, oh, yeah. and we've we, grown. Well, you never, you and I fought only until we were like. When we were young. Yeah. I mean, ever since you and I both were like 18, I feel like 
the one time we fought was over who would do laundry when they were back from college, you know? It was, we both caught each other in a bad time there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it was just raging hormones, but... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the time we really only, like, ever than we were kids, like, fought, fought. Yeah, no, we've, you and I, if we ever have beef, it's like, oh, it'll be one of us being grumpy. Well, actually, not even. We're not, if we're grumpy for a second, we'll be snappy for one minute. And it's not even something that we're doing to each other. It's just some external factor. And we take yeah. it out on each other because we're siblings. We're like, she can take this real quick. You're like, you're calling me at a bad time. Yeah. I'm going to take this well, all you, out we're on blood. you right you have to say, be. say one thing wrong and I'm ready to go on you. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So. I appreciate it. Even, like, recently, siblings. like, a few weeks ago, you... You were stressed. About I think I asked you something and then like just a random question. <laughs> you were just in a bad mood and you came at me really hard. And I don't think I even replied because I was like, I'm busy. It's fine. He's mm-hmm. good. And then you called me and you're like, or you text me something. You sent me something and you're like, hey, Rem, I'm really sorry. Like, I was stressed about, I think I had a test something or something was going on. And I was yeah. like, it's such a bad time. You know, we're just like t- take anger out. That was my bad. But yeah. No, but I appreciate it. I mean, I wasn't bothered because you're my brother. And I was like, we're, we're fine. But also for you to come back without me even replying or like we didn't even start a fight or anything you were just like hey i'm so sorry i just wanted to tell you like an hour later i, I was just going through a lot i hope you understand like i love you so much oh, you called yeah. me i appreciated that a lot yeah i feel like when you if you reflect on your actions always and kind of come back like with a sincere apology yourself without having to you know that kind of at least to me that means like the world i'm like oh they're thinking about how they acted to me and they clearly saw i was wrong too so like you know it, like just if someone cuts you off and they're like, "Oh, I'm sorry." Like, yeah, then you're that like, means you're the like, world. You're you're like, like oh, I hate you." Okay, and they're like, no "Oh, worries. you know, mistakes happen. It's okay." You know? Yeah, <laughs> they're all good. Have, have the best day of your life. You're an awesome person. You know? <laughs> it just it's the small things that like you know. It's again. the owning up to. It's taking responsibility, yeah. and that like all of a sudden melts away any sort of like anger that yeah, you have. Yeah, being able to agree. you know say you're wrong or that you did wrong and. And not like a half excuse, like, oh, you shouldn't have, but I'm still sorry. Or, I'm sorry you made me feel that way. Or, like, or, mm-hmm. or you know what's the worst? Um, well. Sorry you feel that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry you feel, feel that, that way. way. Or sorry you took it that way. Yeah. And it's like, no. I don't think, I, like, realistically, I don't think that someone would feel that way unless there was some kind of, you know. For a reason. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I loved our little our little chat that we had. Same, I same. um I want to go through these little questions. Okay. And uh, I know Alicia and Ash, oh, my phone just froze. I know Alicia and Ash asked these questions and they went through them. But since we talk so much, we'll just do a little quick fire of these Sounds questions. Sounds good to me. Okay. Who was your first crush? We can both answer. Um, okay. Uh, like celebrity crush or just in person, like whoever? Whichever. What do you think of first when you hear who was your first crush? Uh, do I say the name? Em- sure. Emily Braun. Oh my was, God. The twins <gasps> that went to Rang Springs. You yes. Yeah. They had a brother too. I forgot their, his name, but yeah. Were they like family friends? Yeah. They moved away and I was like heartbroken. I remember oh. <laughs> when they was like really sad. I set my phone. I gave her my number like the day before she was leaving, you know, to like wherever they left, like sixth grade. Uh huh. And I sent my voice mail. You know, I used to send voicemails back. You know, if it was, I think I was like, hey, if this is Emily, like, you know, I'm <laughs> something late, you like, made that your voicemail. Dad mail? called me and it went to voicemail <laughs> and he's like, hey, son, I think you should change your voicemail. <laughs> And that was the most cringe thing you think <laughs> ever. Looking you back, were I was so like, funny. "How can you be that cringe in sixth grade?" Well, man? Shane thought he was the coolest kid ever I growing didn't. up. We need to find I the photo. Didn't. We got back his kindergarten photo when I, I was in second grade. My glasses hanging off. Yeah, no. So they were all were like posed. <laughs> Keep in mind, how old are you in kindergarten? Like seven, six. No, Younger weird. maybe? No, like yeah, probably what? Yeah, like five, six. <laughs> oh, that's pre-K. Yeah, Shane's five, like five years old. We get a photo back of all the whole class on the playground, smiling, just standing straight, looking at the camera. Shane is full on leaning, hanging on the, the bar, playground. halfway <laughs> with the, like a smirk face. And my mom and dad just thought it was the funniest. I'm thing hanging off it like this ever. Like yeah, and he's just like <laughs> like a mm, face. Um, so I'll try and find that photo and put it in. But like that was Shane as a child. Oh, he was a handful. Um, my first crush, Tony Coffin in the second grade. The same Tony class Coffin. that Ryan Murphy was in with me. Oh, uh, Murph. Murph. Was that Miss Okamura? Yeah. Did yeah. you have her too? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. When, where, and who was your first kiss? When, when, who, where? When, um, where, and who? When was in seventh grade. Okay. Seventh or eighth grade. Uh, a girl named Nicole Nelson. That was my first girlfriend. <laughs> <gasps> Nicole Nelson. And then. Um, what a name. Nicole Nelson. Yeah, that was it. That All right. Was, yeah. And where? Uh, El Rancho. <gasps> we met behind uh, like after like. Did you plan like, it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> we met behind like, this planner after like third period of her like break. Because you're not allowed to like hug or anything. So we're like, oh my God. It was like. A, oh my God. A you go and talk. Yeah, literally kiss and separate and go like talk with your friends. Like, oh my God. We uh, kissed. Oh my God, we're going to go to jail. I was a, le- a late bloomer. My first kiss was in my senior year of high school. Nothing wrong with that. I know Thank a lot of you. Like that. I know a lot of guys who had their first kiss were. Oh, I love that. On. It was with my 
technically my first boyfriend, but like not, it, was, it wasn't a real boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. We were boyfriend and girlfriend yeah, yeah. for like three days and I think he hates me now. Um, his name was DJ and it was in front <laughs> of Ryan Serafin's house on his driveway. Oh, right up the street. Yeah. Do you remember when you and some guy walk around our neighborhood and I'd always drive by and like. I think that was him. Yeah, I think I'm so. I'm pretty sure. Oh my God, that's right. I forgot about that. Um, okay. What is one thing you've never told me? One out of many. There's one out lot. of many? Yeah, there's a lot. There's got to be lots you haven't told me. That's just normal. You, you start first. Let's hear. Let's, I'll match your. Uh, match where we go. Mm -hmm. uh, what's one thing Nothing that's going to make me like though. cringe when I get home though. Like. Ugh. Yeah. No. <laughs> like editing yours. Cal editing my and Cal's juicy Q&A. Yeah. <laughs> Wash my I ears feel like out. You that got was when I was happy I had bad hearing. <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> I that. feel like that's probably the worst. Yeah. Like you learned through that. I, yeah, I, I I'm did. pretty much an open book. One thing that I never told you, um, I can't think of anything. I feel like I tell you everything. I feel like you know everything too. I mm -hmm. mean, because you and I go to each other before mom or that. You know what I mean? At least yeah. we're and we don't have really anything crazy. I feel I don't like you think know so either. You know, and even anything crazy like I've told you. Yeah. So we'll skip that one. No, when we had like our, I told you about when we had our small thing. Like you, you know, you knew after. Oh yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay oh and the proposal when i told you yeah um Remind. okay yes oh my god that's right okay hopefully you next how did you yes I agree. <laughs> Cow. how do you feel oh how did you really feel about the last gift i bought you what was the last gift i don't know was it the baby stuff or i guess so yeah the baby stuff was the last thing i got mm -hmm. you oh grateful you <laughs> feeling good about baby stuff oh yeah it's awesome like right now just saving any money is, is great for you know emergencies and things like that medical costs and you don't really see the cost of a child until you have one, right? I mean, I've, I've done it online. I've tried to calculate averages, you know, whatever. I think the U.S. average is 20000 per year, and that's including <gasps> paying for, like, a daycare if both parents work. Oh. I think so. Without, it's, like, fifteen or so. I mean, I, I always obviously knew having babies were expensive, but when I got Lily's register list, I was mind blown. It's crazy because, I mean, when you really have not I mean, and there's ways you can do it. There's ways you can have a baby and be completely affordable. Of course. But then you're not going to have, like, if you have my wife, she wants to make sure that <laughs> every single thing is perfect. Like She's the, so cute. Yeah, like, that, the cotton has to be, like, <laughs> washed 1.5 million times before it touches the baby. She, all our, our detergents for, like, a month have been all the baby safe stuff. So that way, when it comes, when it comes, when he comes, <laughs> he can be on anything. There's no chemicals, all this stuff. So, yeah. I love that. Yeah, the baby stuff's expensive for sure. So that was the last gift you got me. Other than that, like, I mean, you got me stuff all the time, right? So... Well, I'm trying to think what you got me for my birthday. Money. You got me money. Yeah, Shane loves money. Oh, just, yeah. You're okay. easy to buy. College kid debt. You know, it's easy. Thank <laughs> you. Easy. Perfect. Easy. And I know it's better than getting you, like, a video game or something. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, that kind of stuff, like, I'll get when I'm more financially when stable, you, secure, exactly. whatever you want. But, it, yeah. Or when it, you have time to play video games, too. Exactly. I haven't. Yeah. Lily got me a new Xbox for Christmas. <laughs> haven't even broken her out of the sister, box. Her little sister's played it more than me. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the last gift you bought me was for my birthday that you got, you and Lily oh, got me, me a and Lily Dior keychain. for that thing to match the car. Yeah, I love it. Nice. It's so cute. That's and it's, it was just so special even. and oh, I yeah. appreciate it. I think that was the only time I bought in, like designer stuff. Designer? You and Lily, oh, For yeah. me? Oh. Um, also, oh, also obviously this is yours and Lily's first kid. So <laughs> yeah, if you guys have another one, you can always save things and it'll be a little oh, bit more cost yeah, effective. Definitely. Well, I mean, we're going to, we can pass them around the family and whoever's having one. Cause now I mean, our families will get in bigger. So I'm so happy. Finally, guys. Um, okay, who would play you in a movie? Oh. We'll start with that. Who I mean, our me options are a little limited. Any Asian guy that looks like me, I guess. I was just going to say, our options are limited currently, but the, it is getting better, and we love the representation, but currently, we're definitely a little more limited. Uh, who would yeah. play you in a movie? I'm down for the guy from um, Walking I Dead. Oh, oh, yes, yes. He doesn't look like me, but I like that guy a lot. I like him a nice lot. Guy. I also like um, Ki Hoi Kwan. Oh, no. I feel like... From everything, everywhere, all at once. I haven't seen that. No, you didn't see his. It's a zombie had movie, right? His acceptance speech uh, speeches. Uh -huh. Did you ever see them? Like, they all, oh, oh, you're gonna TV, cry. He reminds TV. me so much of Dad. Really? Okay. He's from Indiana Jones. Is um, he the little kid? The little kid. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That would be Dad, I think. Okay. Um, but for you, yeah. I mean, I don't know who would play me. I guess. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, there's. <laughs> I, what if we went personality wise? What personality wise? Yeah. Okay, let's what go movie with that. star do you think kind of emulates your character? Me. Oops. Well, that's actually the next question. It says, okay, now who should play you in a movie? Oh, well, there you go. Okay. Personality wise, for me, I'd go Jake Gyllenhaal because he can play any role really well. No, we hate Jake here. Did he We're do team Taylor Swift. We hate Jake Gyllenhaal. Say it. 
we, I hate Jake. Do we have to? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, say I hate Jake Gyllenhaal. Am I getting paid to say it? You're Swifty. I'll pay you. I hate Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jake. Me him go way back. Just kidding. He's a good actor, but we are team Taylor Swift. I like him. Who else do I like? John to play Denzel Washington. He can't. He can't play me. <laughs> I love Denzel Washington. Yeah, I love Denzel Washington. <laughs> I love him I mean, so much. <laughs> the talent, talent yeah. really jumped out there. Incredible guy. Um, I would say for me, <laughs> well, I mean, I love Gemma Chan, but we're not really like the same on personality. I think personality for me, I feel like Mindy Kaling and I have a very similar personality. Just Who's blah, 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 blah. Um, show me a picture. Me, you know her know from her The Office, from. Um, oh, the Mindy oh. Project. Oh, okay. I do know her. I do know yes. her. Yes. I just feel like we're like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I could see that. Right? Yeah. Similar. Funny. Funny and talkative. Okay. But sweet. Mm. But sweet. Oh, my God. If you could go back in time, would you change what you wore to prom? That's so funny. No, I don't think I would. What'd you wear? Did you go to both proms? Uh-huh. I only went to one. I think I went to three. <gasps> you were cool. Well, no, Alicia and I were talking about that. My f- my junior and senior one. Oh, because you dated a girl at a different school. Yeah, and then I, yeah, exactly. And then so I came back from college to take her when I was a freshman. Was she younger? She was oh, a that senior. was yeah. that one that I never got to meet. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. She who shall not be named. <laughs> um, you would not change it. I mean, boys are easy. You yeah, just I wear mean, what am I going to do? It's yeah. literally just changing the color, changing the tie, essentially. Yeah, but you have to match your date. That's the big thing. Um, yeah. I would absolutely not change mine at all. Mine was iconic for the time. <laughs> uh, like every girl, pretty much, is wearing that dress. I think it was Sherry Hill, and it was like a full rhinestone like bodice, and then you could j- basically it was like. The rhinestone seemed the same, and then you could change the color of the tool bottom. It, it oh wasn't my. heinous. Yes. Would I change it? No. Sorry. And I think I want to do a prom theme birthday next year and make oh, everyone goodness. wear. Do the pictures. Yes. Yeah, you do the pictures. Isn't that like, so yeah. good? Um, so I did a royal blue, but you could have like purple, Bright. green, black, whatever. I'll insert photos in here. I would not change it at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I was cracking up when you were talking about that because I was thinking about that time that magazine or whatever roasted you for your outfit that you wore, the dress. <laughs> Which one? I've been on the worst dress list multiple times. What? The white puffy shoulders. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, one was the pretty one. bad. The one where you talked about on a vlog, and I was like, huh? and I looked it up, and I was like, ooh, Poor girl. You know what's like, worse? Why I are got they coming s- from my sister. What's then? worse is I got styled for that by like a stylist, and I paid. Oh, that's their fault then. Are like they, they feel the true pain. Fifteen hundred dollars. Man, for a stylist, we could have gone to H and M or something. And, got and I got put on the worst dress list. Yeah, I paid to be on the worst dress list. All right, hey, next it's okay. up, I paid to get Sadie's haircut, and she looks terrible. <laughs> I keep thinking about it. Miles is gonna see her, and he's like, "That's not the same dog I saw a month ago." So. <laughs> okay, see. what's your most prominent childhood memory? Oh, good. I mean, prominent. It's prominent means like standing out there. The right? little blurb after. You might have grown up in the same house, but kids remember events completely differently. So this is a mm. unique unique way to talk about your childhood through your sister's eyes. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, prominent for us. I mean, I can lie. Getting Lila was like one of my highlights of my oh, life. Oh, our first family dog. Yeah, I agree with that. Because you and I wanted a dog. I mean, every family, every kid wants dogs. But you and I, I would wait. I would have dreams about having a dog. Wake up and not be there and be sad the rest oh. of the day. And I'm sure you felt similar ways, but we wanted a dog so bad because and we kind of grew up around dogs, you know, with Andy's dogs and things like that. I mean, I got bit by a couple dogs, and I still love dogs, you know. Yeah, yeah. If they buy you, it's, it's your fault, not theirs. <laughs> well, sometimes you would antagonize them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one, the one that with the, the scar, that was like, you know. Yeah, that was bad. That was a little different, but you know, I think I'd say that's definitely one of the most prominent memories. Bad memories, I will say, definitely when we were skiing. Up in Tahoe or Mammoth? <gasps> Mammoth, and when I got, got lost. you got stuck in a tree well, kind of. When I got yeah, lost. Yeah, the panic, because I didn't know what was going on. Like, you know what I mean? Did but they tell you? Mom and dad worried, and oh. seeing them like that, obviously can instill a lot of fear in their kid. So I was just like, I'm, I'm an only child now. Like, <laughs> no, cause, and then also, mom growing up watching Dateline and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Anytime someone's missing for five seconds, my brain would go, oh, my God, they're kidnapped. <laughs> We're going to see them on 2020 tomorrow. Like, yeah. So sad. Yeah. So, yeah, when I saw it, when they can find you. From oh, going in the tree so one, all, I was so scared. I was like, oh my goodness. Because all the families are freaking out, right? Because yeah. it's, it's a big, big ass mountain. You're yeah. wearing all white. I don't know who let you wear all Mom. white on the snow. <laughs> Mom. But I mean, <laughs> it's it's so funny because obviously that was a really traumatizing experience. And, uh, but I vividly, I can put myself right back in that memory of being in the well, yeah, pulling myself out. I remember a lady and a daughter found you. Right? I was you sobbing. Shout out to that lady and, and her daughter. Oh, she was so, oh my God, I would Shout love to, to see moms. where she's at right now. Mom's everywhere. I was crying, crying, but like thinking back, like 
I was okay. Mm -hmm. I was fine. Like, it could have been so much worse. It's just so funny how at the time it felt like the world was ending. I think they felt probably guilt too because they were like, oh my God, we should have a better eye on her. But like in reality, is how are you going to keep an eye on so many kids and one's wearing pure white. Pure white. I just remember vividly (laughs) going, mom, mom. At the very bottom of the She went right by me. Mom. (laughs) Mom's good at skiing. Mom's athletic. They're so good. Dad were so cool. They're super cool. I know. There's pictures of them uh, scuba diving with the whale shark in dad's room. What? Yeah. What? You've seen it before. You just don't remember for sure. But I'll, I'll, I'll have dad some. These were what I was talking about. I was like, I want to bring those on so she can see. I would love to see that. Prominent childhood memory. Um, I mean, unfortunately, my first one that comes to mind is Shane was a biter growing up as a kid. <laughs> I knew this Look was, at these big teeth. Look at our God. big teeth we have. We have giant teeth and a small mouth. And uh, Shane was a biter. And I remember he w- he was, again, as we said, he was a troubled troubled baby <laughs> and he would just like he'd always be getting my mom always says like when she got a call from school about me she'd be like what's i was teasing what's wrong Everyone with relax Remy? i was teasing and then it's when she got a call thing. about shane it would be what did shane do and shane would always just but he'd guess, bite yeah, me true. he'd bite other other kids and but we were you were like three you were really young and my mom Thank would go to the, the gym disclaimer there he was young. Me. You were a baby. You were a toddler. And she went to the gym, but like in the front of the gym, there was like a child the play, daycare. Yeah, the play area. And I remember, so I was like five and you were like three and I remember playing by myself and I was like going down the slide and I vividly remember like sliding down. This might be my earliest memory. <laughs> in the ball pit. Sliding into the ball pit and then I hear, Wah! and I remember going, Shane did something in my brain. I was like, I just know. I and I ran over. You had bitten the kid's nose. Probably in my face. How did he get there? <laughs> you probably went up and bit it, but he broke skin and my mom had, had to get me. brought in from the gym and we had to leave. And I feel like we probably weren't allowed back or something, but I that was my the most fifth on that. They have no evidence. They have no proof. No cameras. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there something I did that you've never gotten over or forgiven you, you biting me? <laughs> oh yeah. I can see that. I used to pull your hair. I was telling Lily, I used to sit on your back and uh, when you watch TV like this, like, you know, chest on the ground, uh-huh. feet up and I sit on your back and I pull your hair. Uh huh. I was Don't watching. Ask me why. Have I'm you sorry. seen the movie This Is Forty? Oh, of course. The scene where the two daughters. Paul Rudd. I love Paul Rudd. I, I forgot to mention that. Paul Rudd. Mom and Dad met him in Mammoth. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah. they've met like a lot of cool people. Yeah. Well, they said he's like the nicest out of everyone they've ever met. I believe that. He seems like a fantastic man. Yeah, he doesn't age too. Good for that guy. He's so cute. Um, <laughs> in that movie, it's like the scene of the family in bed, and it's like the parents watching TV, and then the, the two daughters are there, mm-hmm. and the youngest, the the older daughter is laying on the edge of the bed, and the younger daughter comes over and like wet willies and like is like pulling on <laughs> oh, her hand, just like yeah. and. The, the older daughter goes like stop it and the parents get mad at the older daughter and i'm not kidding when i watched it i was like oh, that is my life the younger siblings always antagonizing and then when the older sibling fights back the older sibling gets in trouble yeah that's that's tough all the older sibling or oldest siblings out there they uh, have a tough life all the time you'd come poke me p- or patience. bite me and i'd be like shane and they'd be like remy don't raise your voice and i'd be like if he didn't bite me i wouldn't raise my you're voice. lucky i wasn't a girl why? If you, I feel like you and I would have fought so much. Oh, girl, yeah. Like, or like if you were a boy, we would have fought so much more. Same gender. No, having a younger brother was annoying. Oh, that's the job of a younger brother. <laughs> ask anyone, <laughs> oh. ask any girl with a younger brother. Ugh, true. Okay. Let's finish with one more. What's one piece of parental advice that you've held on to? Oh, uh, let's see. Hmm. It's definitely something dad has said. No offense to mom, but dad, dad. He's very. Uh, he's a wise. Yeah, he's a wise old man. He like. He's seen a lot. Dad's gone through a lot of things in life, so he's, you know, he's he's experienced a lot. Not that he's like a man of few words, but when he does speak, it's it's, it's weighted. <laughs> yes, it is. Hmm, let me think. You think, and I'll say mine. Yeah. Mine wasn't necessarily something they said, but I think just the fact that they let me leave school and pursue my dreams when I know how badly. And how worried they were for me and how badly they wanted me to stay in school. Um, Obviously, I'm so grateful because I was able to do something that I loved and see it through. And I'm so grateful that it worked out. But even if it didn't, just the fact that they let me try, even though it wasn't necessarily what they wanted for me. And I know that must have been really hard. It meant the world to me. And I hope that I can take that and pass that on to my kids and give them the same, you know, freedom to do what they want and pursue their dreams, even if it's not necessarily what I had thought for them. Um, and I'm just eternally grateful. And especially cause I'm sitting here on this couch doing my podcast with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they, that took a lot for them. Like now in my spot, you know, it, it's, it's cool that dad always had faith in you hundred percent, but he's also more lenient and more kind of like go with the flow. And 
I think mom had faith. She's just more of a worrier. Exactly. No, 100% And dad did. had faith, but he didn't have to pay for college anymore. So, mm-hmm. he, so said, he was like, hey. Drop right out, girl. You wanna go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, it was expensive. It was so expensive. Yeah. Because you were dorming there, I forgot, yeah. Yeah, Petlin J, let's go. Well, let's see, I would say something a lot, what, I forgot what dad said or what it was about. I think it was sometime when I was at tennis, and I didn't like the kids I was like in my group with all the time. And I was like, either <laughs> that or a coach. And I, like, I knew I had to be there still, like I had to do and everything, and I just would complain every day on the way home, when are you drive me, you know? And I think at one point he was just like, you know, you can be right or you can be happy. Mm. And it was kind of just like, because yeah, I would just complain, like that kid's not good, and he, all he does is joke around, like he like harasses us and like, such a jerk you know all this all these things he's like yeah you could be right about that but like what's gonna do so can you be right about it or be happy you know just, just suck like it up. yeah exactly it's just go with the flow and you know and eventually you just you know things will go and for for uh context shane was in tennis for like a very large portion of his life he was so good at tennis yeah, t- the one of the guys he used to play taylor fritz he's like probably he's top five or top ten at least and yeah he won no the way yeah, and, and it's funny because mom and dad grew up watching him play too and yeah I think so. good for the him fans, yeah exactly there's a, a few of the guys went professional i think reese went professional if you remember reese and his sister yeah yeah, yeah. The, um well, shane was like Ernesto, you were i feel like you were on track to go pro but you just ended up i don't know i had a burning out. well my ankle like i can't even with my ankle still mm. like they'll kind of like even if i go on long hikes i have to actually bring an ankle brace just because there'll be times where they just i can't walk Ugh. like i can't walk at all. I remember like I'm too much lateral, you know, movements. But you went to like a different high school to do tennis because you were that good. And I remember when you would come play my school for tennis, all my friends who were in tennis would be like, oh, Shane's coming. We're really worried today. <laughs> and I'd be like, that's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I wonder what it would have been like if we went to the same school. We would have been besties. We would have, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we would have fought a lot more. Yeah, but <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, thank you so much for coming onto the pod. I know this is a really long episode, and we are so sorry to the audience and the editors, but I'm yeah, glad we got to I catch up. I apologize for my ranting, and thank you for having me and uh, working on my public speaking and anxiety skills. You did a great job. <laughs> thank you. I just focused on you this time. It was harder with the video we did before because I'd have to look at the camera and what yeah. you said. So, you know, inanimate object versus yeah. you. So. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. It was honestly a good time. I'm sure they loved you. I can imagine the comments now. Oh, I hope so. Be nice to me, guys. I'm sensitive. Like, <laughs> Don't come for me. Come for her, if anything. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Kidding. That's fine. You can do that. But love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you guys next week with a new episode. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.